हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू अप्लाइड फॉरेंसिक साइंस फॉर जस्टिस स्टूडेंट ग्रुप आई एम अमिता शाइनी अ वॉलेंटियर फ्रॉम अप्लाइड फॉरेंसिक साइंस फॉर जस्टिस स्टूडेंट ग्रुप टॉपिक फॉर डिस्कशन इज डिसेप्शन एंड डिटेक्शन टेक्निक्स ऑफ डिसेप्शन टॉपिक्स टू बी इंक्लूडेड अंडर दिस आर वॉट इज डिसेप्शन वाई डू पीपल लाई टाइप्स ऑफ लायर्स हाउ टू डिटेक्ट डिसेप्शन साइंस दैट वी शुड ऑब्जर्व techniques for detecting deception and its admissibility what is deception it is an intentional act of misleading or tricking others by giving them wrong information about the true nature of something it simply refers that lying to someone is nothing but deception why do people lie the first one is self gain people usually lie to get some benefits from something or someone The second one is to avoid punishment. For suppose if we think of the story of teacher and the student, usually teacher teaches in the class and gives homework. If the child forgets to do his homework, he usually tell a lie that he lost his book or went outside and so many reasons he tells to the teacher. The child knows that if the homework is not shown to the teacher, the punishment would be compulsory given to him. so that in order to escape the punishment he tells a lie this shows that to avoid the punishment people usually lie the third one is to maintain the relationship to get attached to someone or to continue the bond with the people that they usually don't want to live it they usually lie the fourth one is for self protection and the last is to rescue someone from any harm types of liars the first one is occasional liars occasional liars are those persons who lie very rarely the second one is frequent liars they lie very often habitual liars they lie every time and show very less indication of deception it is very easy to catch them because they usually tell lie which is very silly The last one is professional liars as the word professional means experts these people are expertized in telling lie they usually lie for a purpose they are extremely talented in lying and it is very hard for us to determine whether they are telling lie or truth the next topic is how to detect deception to detect deception we should mainly focus on three types that is verbal cues non verbal cues and vocal cues the first one is verbal cues cues are nothing but signals the signals which we sense from the content of the speaker's statement is known as verbal cues such as we can determine the pitch of the person and we can calculate the response such as to whatever questions we were asking to him like how kind of response he is giving to us at what time he is giving the response etc errors and we can even know the nervousness and how much tensed he feels and the rate of speech etc the second one is non verbal cues the cues that we sense from the actions of the person are known as non verbal cues such as body language facial expressions and eyeball movement figure 1 describes about the eyeball movement if the eyeball movement is towards upper right then it describes about visual creating that we have never seen if the eyeball movement is towards upper left then it describes about visual remembering of an image or something if the eyeball movement is towards power right then it indicates that the person is possibly lying or making up of words if the eyeball movement is towards forward left then it describes about remembering sounds that are previously heard if the eyeball movement is down right then recalling of emotions and remembering of a physical feeling may happen if the eyeball movement is towards down left then it describes about talking to oneself and listening to internal voice can observe seven facial expressions in every human that is happiness surprise sadness contempt disgust anger and fear the last method of detecting deception is by vocal cues vocal cues are the signals that get detected from the voice such as 
hesitation, tone of voice, etc. Signs that should be observed are The signs that we should observe are The first, they change their head position very quickly. The second, they stand very still and try to prove that they are in a very relaxed state. The third, they touch or cover their mouth. Fourth, their breathing pattern changes. If a question is asked, the person tries to control his nervousness while lying. The fifth one is, they try to repeat words or phrases. The sixth one is, they cover vulnerable body parts. They cover the body parts such as chest, neck, head or throat and keep on rubbing them. The seventh one is, they tend to point out too much. Liars think that it is a defensive situation and keep on pointing to a single thing. The eighth one is, it becomes difficult for them to speak. Whenever a direct question is asked to them, they feel stressed and keep on pointing to a single thing and make them unable to speak. The ninth one is, they provide too much of information. Rather than the asked details, they provide lot of information to the officer. The tenth one is, they stare at you without even blinking too much. The two techniques used to detect deception are polygraphy and narcoanalysis. The first one is polygraphy. Polygraphy is also known as lie detection test. Polygraphy is an instrument which records the physiological characteristics such as blood pressure, pulse rate and skin conductivity. This polygraphy is also known as truth verification technique because it helps in the detection of truth. Polygraphy involves both application of psychology and physiology. It depends upon the principle of psychosomatic interaction. Polygraphy instruments There are three polygraphic instruments. They are sphygmomanometer, pneumograph and galvanograph. First of all, we will look about sphygmomanometer. Sphygmomanometer is an instrument which measures the blood pressure. Usually, a rubber cuff is wrapped around the arm and attached to the column of mercury such that the blood pressure of a person can be known. The second one is pneumograph. Pneumograph records the velocity and force of the chest movements while respiration. An inflated rubber tube is wrapped around the abdominal region so that we can record the respiration patterns. The last one is galvanograph. Galvanograph records the amount of perspiration that is sweating produced by the body. It usually contains electric sensors attached to the fingertips because fingertips contains high density of sweat glands so that easily how much amount of perspiration the person does it can be easily recorded. The figure above shows the polygraphic instrument. The inflatable rubber cuff attached to the left arm of the person is the sphygmomanometer and the rubber cuff wrapped around the chest is for recording the respiration patterns that is pneumograph and an instrument which is wrapped around to the fingertips is the galvanograph. The main role is done by the questionnaire system in polygraphy. The questionnaire system mainly consists of three types of questions Irrelevant questions, relevant questions and control questions Irrelevant questions are those questions that are not related to the crime But the relevant questions are those questions which depends upon the facts of the case That is that are directly related to the crime Control questions are those questions which compares the response to the relevant questions so that the judgment of non-deception could be easily done. The second method for the detection of deception is narcoanalysis. Narcoanalysis is a chemophysiological test done to the suspect to extract the information from him. A psychoactive drug called as sodium thiopentothal or sodium amytal is injected intravenously to the subject and interrogation is done. This dose of the drug varies from person to the person.
the drug suppresses the thinking power and reasoning power of the person such that he cannot create something and tell to the investigating officer this drug enables him to answer to the whatever questions asked to him like yes or no the narcotic drug used for this purpose is known as truth serum and the test is known as truth serum test the last topic is admissibility both polygraphy and narco analysis are not considered as evidences in court but are considered as supportive evidences that is corroborative evidences thanks for watching the video please like share and subscribe the video and please click on the bell icon for latest updates